It's the dark-haired girl from my class. The one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had her pegged, pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of wise in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking toward the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books in beside it. The girl starts looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close, underneath her long, dense bangs. I, I can see that part of her face, at least a third or if not a half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. God, this is... I, I would feel bad if I was her. If I, if I was me, I would try not to look, because I know she probably gets this a lot. For a second, I am shocked and diverted my eyes to the book in her hands before I realized that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I was, what I walked up to her for. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Hi, I'm new here, Azio Nakia. We're in the same class. Uh, I'll go for the... I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether... It's okay or not for me to sit. But finally, she nods just a little. Uh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hazio. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I, I know. We are in the same class. Her speech is startled and so quiet that it's barely audible, even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. H Hanako! I'm H Hanako! I resist the urge to say that say nice name, just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other. And here I am being all bothered and fused about that kind of thing. Don't don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check those books if you don't mind. She nods a little and signs a little sign of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introduction of the books. I picked up and she buries her face in the, her book. Uncomfortably, silence uh, consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction. I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though it d darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. What the? She stands up for forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... 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 <laughs> well, okay. I don't know what she's trying to say there. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards this counter. 
her hair like take off catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. What was that all about? Why'd she do that for? I mean, for, I thought everything was going great. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Lily and y Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako, myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see, uh, notice a girl run past here? Uh, maybe. What did she look like? Long dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw a reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yuko, would you excuse me? I had better try and find her. Uh, sure, I'll just hold on to those until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right, I'll see you later then. Lily hustily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What do you? What did you do? Nothing. I was just looking for some books, and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I could think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she's a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think, and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder, it's just how she is, I think. You could doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be there, here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casual and only makes me feel fo phony. Like I'm supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. You could have fidgets looking like she wants to say something to that, but resist it. I think it's an elephant, only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile and she blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People have papers on their desks. Real, really like doing that. Do you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing, but I, I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from beside the beanbags where Hanako and I were sitting and return to the corner. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill the time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tech. Holding the library books with one arm, I twirl. I twirl my pocket with the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind has startled me, making me nearly drop the books. I'm carrying all the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? Who, who, who is it? I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting of his glasses in the dark gives me a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? 
His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before yesterday. I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What what day is it today? I try to ignore him. He is he just joke is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You li live across the hall, you're Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with uncomprehensive fear. How'd you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of, of two things. Either we may have met and you are telling the truth and I just can't remember it, or you are a spy. He pauses. It's like a spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room. Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not a psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kanji points a finger in my face. Damningly. Unlike you. Stop that man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies! If you think you can pass as Hezio because I'm legally blind, you are sincerely mistaken. You don't even look like him. Resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you are kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exhaberated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sign. Stay there. Kenji comes closer one careful step at a time. I stay still. At least he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh wait, I see it now. Damn, it really look is you. Signing again and then once again for a good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up man? You don't look too good. I think something wrong? I don't know, just had something stupid happen to me, a few stupid things actually, even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on the other people here. I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any c contact either. It's rough dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. I am slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see, this is how it is in this world. There is no justice, you see. Even when I lose, I win because I don't lose the lesson. What does that mean even? What does that even mean? It, it doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? Uh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally, literally, to she actually ran away from me. Was my fault, really. I think I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face. I guess it could go either way. She was... she was cute. Yeah, yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. A strongly disappropriate amount, I believe. This is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man. But did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and, star and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the unturned eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that is a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be the, a men's dream, but no. What I'm about to tell you could be could blow your mind. Are you ready? 
I don't know where is this going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I'm not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground, the site of a famous infiltration. This disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have came. In case this cold war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the event eternal war against those forces of the firmaments. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers in the past. The build-up of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step of our economy is badness and the country itself is small and isolated yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of po political view. The perfect target. They are so cunning as expected of women. Soon the day will come when Kenji voice trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They will string you along and then kill you just as they kill me. You will end up just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So you're not supposed to say ain't something like that? Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah. Vest Emist Conspiracy. Stop it, stop it. I lost you way, way back. There's somewhere, somewhere around Finnish infiltration. Too hard to follow. It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay. Graphs are still cool, though, right? He sparks energetically, responding almost, almost before I... I'm done talking, moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had a pet as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in the insane world that is my dream you can't just steal my man's dream what the hell this can't be two last me sane men it would invalidate that whole last part and that part is kind of important there could only be one like in that forging movie where there could only be one and in the end there's only one dude left because that was the point i have never seen anyone talk so Repeatedly and so defensively about obviously absol about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of other dark and complex conspiracies that this school holds as tangled as. Quick, finish my analog analogy for me, be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain that the vast infamist conspiracy to them. Daniel is a terrible thing. Later. Later? He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly. It's like he didn't even open the door but instead walked right through it. It's like a ghost.